Today we are looking at how to use a few actors to create the look of a large crowd. When you're shooting live action, extras and background is very expensive. Think about paying everyone at least minimum wage for one day, and it's at least $100 per person for a 10 hour day. So a crowd of 50 extras is gonna cost you at least $5,000, probably twice that when you factor in all the fringes and uh, payroll costs. So if you have a scene that takes place at a football stadium, you could be spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on people. That's not the way it's typically done now. What they use is either CGI, meaning digitally generated extras, or they used digital crowd multiplication, which is what we're gonna to do today. To put it simply, it really is just getting a small amount of extras, say six or seven like I have here, and getting them to stand in different places at different times, and then masking off those different areas so that you turn a small amount of people into a large amount of people. It isn't always for a cast of thousands either. Here we've made six people look like a pretty sizable protest. So let's dive in and see how it's done. So here is the site of our protest. We are in my backyard. Some of my neighbors kindly volunteered to uh, help with the project. So here we have uh, the same five people, well, really the same two people and some extras protesting in the backyard. What I did was leave the camera where it was and I have then, I had them move to four different spots. So we have the center, the left, camera right, and in front of camera. And for that, I used a blue screen, which we'll look at in a second. So I'm gonna start with my middle one, and I'm just gonna uh, drag that down to my timeline. I don't want the sound, so I'm gonna click op option click on the sound and just find somewhere where they don't go too much out of the center. So this sign is going to cause me problems because it kind of butts into where the other group is standing. So if I just cut it here, you could get really scientific about this and actually put chalk down on the ground so people know where to stand and you know that they're not going to overlap too much. But for this, we'll just, this is just an explanation of how this functions. So then I'll go and get my right hand side group get some stuff some footage of that and drag that on top make it the same length that looks good then i'll get my left hand group drag that on top again just the video so i'll start with my top layer which is the right hand side group i'll go over to my effect controls and select my square uh, mask then I'll just drag this down and then select the, select the other two points. Drag it out. So now we have two groups. Then I'll go down to my layer V2, hit the same button here, make it the right width. And then if I drag this down, you'll see I sort of have to choose which side I'm going to um, which side I'm going to include. You can see how if I had moved the camera in between shots, I'd be getting all kinds of problems. Now, yes, this kind of cuts them in half, but uh, once we increase, we put our foreground in, uh, we're gonna we're gonna help that. So we're gonna, you know, I went in front of them and uh, just threw a blue screen up for a second. So I'm going to drag that into the top. Make sure that it goes most of the way. A little late there. I was operating the camera and the greens and the blue screen myself, so this is not going to be perfect. Then I'm going to here and hit color key, drag that onto that layer. Go over to effect controls, find my color key, drag my color picker onto the blue, and then increase the tolerance. And you'll see that the blue starts disappears. Now I'm left with <laughs> the sides of the blue screen um, and all this other stuff. So then not only in addition to the blue screen, I'll add a garbage mat, 
where I just select the parts that I want of this front group. If I click off the mask, you see it's actually not that bad. If I thin the edge down a little bit, that'll be even better. And you see this edge here isn't great. Um, it's a little bit ugly, but by putting my foreground in the way, I've sort of hidden the space between the edges. This has to, this definitely needs some help here. Yeah. And having done quite a few of these over um, the last few years, you'd be surprised what you can get away with. You know, people aren't, um, aren't scrutinizing this, especially if it's in the foreground or the background and maybe you have a speaker up here. I'll click off my mask and play through that. I'm having trouble here now. It's feathering through the, um, through the bottom of the mask. So I'll drag that out of the frame. So I may have to, let's turn that front one off for a second. That's not the one. This is the one here that probably needs a different type of mask. So we'll get rid of the first mask and we'll basically just go sort of do what we did before and rotoscope something in around this sign. So now hopefully when I place my foreground in, there'll be, like I said, some rough parts. Ideally you'd have this separated, um, not quite as much as this, uh, but so that they wouldn't overlap. And like I say, uh, you definitely want people to change clothes or at least wear bright colors so that you can change the color of their clothes in with your um, color grading software. Um, with these bright patterns, um, it's really difficult to, to like make it, <laughs> make it too dramatically different. And it really depends how long the shot is and how much you, uh, how long you're going to scrutinize it that you need to actually go in and rotoscope this more accurately. For interesting, um, easy little crowd scenes like this, uh, I think this works great. If you're seeing the front of crowds and the signs, you definitely want to have variations of the signs and even have people just exchange clothes. So some people, you know, one person's wearing a hat in one and not in others. That was our look at creating a large amount of people from a small amount of people. It doesn't have to be that precise because usually the crowd aren't the subject of the shot. It's the hero or the sub, the main action. The crowd is just background. Have fun with it and I will see you next time.